Good morning, this is Kelly Hilbert from Apaca Direct, and I'm a few minutes late. Sorry about that, I forgot my cell phone at home, so I had to turn around. <laughs> Oops, I got, I'm getting back in the groove. But I'm almost all better now, and uh, feeling much better. And I just got home from visiting um, my husband's dad, my dad, and um, it was great to be able to visit them. And I also got to spend some time with my daughter, Lauren, and it, it was her birthday on the 5th, so that was totally fantastic. And our granddaughter, Claire, and she is just such a little pistol. She's a busy bee, <laughs> but she's so darling and so cute. So um, this week, I thought I would do Again, I'm still using some of my stash. And so I have some of this, uh, it's called Simply Crea. And I have my sock separated right now because when I do the gussets on the sock, which is where you usually double the amount of stitches on the back here, um, that is done one at a time. And then I will rejoin my socks back together as soon as the gusset and the heel turn is done. So on this sock right here, you can see that I have already completed my gusset and my heel turn. And so if you look at my sock, it's not blocked yet. And uh, again, it's made out of um, Simply Crea by Haiku. And if you look at it, it's a, a, it's a chain at construction. And, and this is from my stash. And it is wonderful for, I'm gonna use these as bed socks because it's 100% baby alpaca and the chain at construction keeps everything together so that your socks will um, hold up better. And so I'm very excited about this. It's a twisted rib. And then it has the, <clears throat> the gusset on the back and then just the heel turn. And you can see that in the back of the sock here, um, it has the twisted stitch. It, it's like reinforcement for the back of your heel. So I, it's really neat. I like this sock pattern. And if you um, want to, here's the picture of the, uh, the sock pattern. It's by Pearl Soho and it's called House Socks. So, and it starts toe up. And I think in the pattern, they're doing something where they cast on using a provisional cast on. And then I think they um, uh, you close it later. But what I did is did Judy's magic cast on and it made it easy to do. So a lot of people are coming on board. Good morning, everyone. It's so nice to have you here with me. I'm so glad to be back home. I mean, I love traveling, but I love being with my husband too. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I was so happy to get home to my husband and my little doggies, and they were just so excited. They were beside themselves. Little Sydney, our puppy, was. <laughs> she was a wild child for a little while because she was so excited that I was home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I. Do you guys want me to bring Sydney back so you can see her sometime? You post okay. comments in that comment section and let me know. And if you do, I can let her come in with me um, to work and and show you how big she's gotten. She's gotten to be a big Great girl. Lesson. Nine months? Yeah, uh, nine months. Yeah. And she is, um, yeah, she's in that teenager stage. So we're working on training harder than ever. And um, yesterday we went on a walk and she likes to, when she sees people, she just throws a fit. So what I had is a little mesh, um, <laughs> uh, they call it a muzzle, but all it did is kind of slow down her barking so that I don't have to correct her. The mesh fabric actually makes it so she doesn't want to bark. And so it's an easy way for me to take her for a walk and um, and not have her scream every time she sees one, someone. And she does it because she wants to see people, but <laughs> I wish she would be less boisterous about it. <laughs> But hopefully as she gets older, she'll grow out of that. And we will have a <clears throat> lovely little girl. Yes, Jim? Victor, oh, yes. Um, we had, um, when I went with Lauren, um, her husband, Matthew, has his grandpa. And his name is Grandpa Victor. And he's 92 years old. And it was really an inspiration to see him because he takes care of himself. He does not have a housekeeper. He does all of his own housekeeping. And his lovely wife had passed away a few years back. And so he was talking to me about how he gets along on his own because um, he said the hardest thing was learning to um, not have someone there to be alone. And so I guess he has 
a couple buddies that he goes out to breakfast with a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. And then um, he does not have air conditioning in his house and he lives in Santa Rosa and it was very hot there. So what he does is he has a little chair that he puts on the front step, uh, the front porch of his house and he sits outside mm -hmm. <laughs> when it gets there. really hot. What's that, honey? Oh yes, and he has the, he had this great idea. Oh, you guys, this was a great idea. He has people sign a guest book when they come to visit. And that way, if he he doesn't remember who the person's name was that came to visit, then he it's in the guest book for him to look at later. And also, um, it goes back to 1950, right? Yes, it goes back into the early 1950s. They get, he has four guest books that have been filled up. And I thought it was a great idea for those of us who sometimes don't um, have as many people visit as we should. It gives you a visual reminder that, hey, you should have some friends over. <laughs> And he's he's totally awesome. He was a great host, and he always uh, has a lovely smile and a great attitude. And he's a very godly godly gentleman. And you could see that the happiness just shines right through him. <laughs> and it, it was really neat to meet him. So anyway, yeah. So I forgot to tell to mention, but every week we have a drawing. And for this last week, was it last week, Jim? Or was it, weeks, anyway, it was actually two weeks ago, I think. It was the Ultra Alpaca Light, and we had the lilac colorway or the blue colorway. And do you know which one was the winner? The lilac. This was the winning color. And if you've never tried Ultra Alpaca Light by Barocco Yarn Company, what it is is 50% Peruvian Highland wool and 50% super fine alpaca. And so you get the characteristics, the best characteristics from the wool and the alpaca. So it creates really nice uh, projects. Uh, I, I've used it so many. Very, very versatile yarn and very lovely. I like these ones because they have the tweed effect to them kind of they have multi colors in them and they're very pretty can you see it up on the screen jim yes beautiful so and then for this week because i'm doing my bed socks out, out of 100 percent baby alpaca i thought i would offer some of our bravo and this is by cordelaine yarns for alpaca directs yarn and this yarn is baby alpaca made in Peru. And we have the gold colorway or charcoal. And you guys vote, and then you get entered to win the prize. And we can also send out the best color that you like goes to the winner for next week. And that's really high quality yarn. Too. Yes, it's Jim said that's very high quality yarn too. And yes, it is. And going into the winter time, I like nothing more than baby alpaca. <laughs> You want to make me happy? Just make me stuff out of baby alpaca because I get super cold. You can see I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt and it's probably going to be in the 80s today. Mm -hmm. It's because I get cold, huh, Jim? Yeah. And part of it is I'm still tired from traveling because I just returned home from uh, traveling to California. And I'm not used to having a little baby um, along with us. So um, it was uh, it was fun, but it was tiring. <laughs> So anyway, so uh, what I would thought I would talk about today is, <clears throat> you know how when we do underarms of our sweaters or the gussets on our socks where we're doing short rows and not knitting all the way across, it creates holes. And so I thought I could talk about no mending short row holes after your socks are complete. But of course, this isn't just for socks. It's for your underarms on sweaters or any or shawls, anywhere that you're having to do short rows and you see that a hole might be popping up. There's a very simple way to deal with that as you're knitting so that you don't have to go later and find a piece of leftover yarn and go back and darn that hole. No, we don't want to do that. When we're done and we weave in our last end from our tail from the uh, bind off, we want to be done with our work and we don't want those unsightly holes showing up. So I thought I would talk to you about it because there's, you know what we need to do when we're doing stuff like this is be really creative. And if one thing doesn't work, try another. Because I was talking to my friend Renee who works here and she was talking about her socks and I'm like, you know, sometimes one trick at one time may work great. And then the very next time it doesn't look as good. So I just take it back out and I try something else until I get it perfect. Um, get it looking just the way that I want it. And no, I do not mend holes after my socks are done. 
I haven't done that in years. I don't have to. You know why? Because I use these little tiny tricks. So I thought maybe you and I could take a look at it together and maybe it might help you with your socks too. Because you know what? Nobody wants to go back and fix something up. <laughs> we want it to be perfect so we don't have to fix it up. And then we can knit more projects faster and have more fun. <laughs> right, Jim? <Yep. laughs> yeah. And so anyway, I wanted to take a look at that. And again, if you want to use this Pearl Soho house sock pattern, it's free on Ravelry. And you can make this too. And all it has, if you look on here, it has a simple gusset and then it has the heel turn. That's it. There's no picking up stitches. It starts from the toe up, which is my preferred way to make socks because then you can use every scrap of your yarn. Where when you're doing top down, you have to save enough yarn to be able to cover your toes. <laughs> and if you accidentally use too much yarn, guess what you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to one, either buy more yarn or use another um, skein of yarn if you don't, if you have it, um, or you simply can't finish the socks because you don't have any yarn left, or you have to use a different color, or you have to do something else. But wouldn't it be nice to know exactly how much yarn you can use? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and use every single shred of it. That's what I love about when, when I'm knitting, I try to use every single scrap that I have because you know what? I only buy yarn that I like. So my yarn is nice and I don't want to waste it. I mean, you know how our moms taught us to sit at the table and eat all of our food because we didn't want to waste any food. It's the same with, with knitting. So I thought we could take a look at it and see what this looks like. And I was writing in my mind as I was working um, <clears throat> things that might help you that I think about when I'm doing these projects on the socks. So <clears throat> the one, the problem, the place where you might have right here is where you, the, see the bend? I'm doing the uh, magic loop method. It's on either side here of the gussets because that's where the end of the short rows was. And so what it creates is kind of, do you see this gap right here that goes stretches from here to here? This is where it might pop up a hole when I start knitting again. But let me show you. So this next stitch is going to be the next stitch that I'm going to be knitting. And the reason why I know that is because my working yarn is coming off this back stitch, right? So I have done all of my heel turn. And I'm ready to join this and go back to working in the round and not working back and forth in short rows. But what I like to do with something like this, this is stitch right here, if I pick a stitch up from the right hand side, I'm going to be doing it as a knit two together because what it's going to do is it's going to hide the stitch that I picked up. If I was going to pick up say I was going to pick up a stitch here on this left hand side, then I would do it as if to SSK. So um, let me show you the knit first and then I'll show you the SSK one. So on here, what I like to do is I like to go over to this right, the right hand side right here and see where I can find a stitch that I can pick up. And mind you, this is a little bit harder because these stitches are twisted already. So they're kind of um, hard to get into, if you know what I mean. That. No, the stitches, are these, see these columns right here? Right. They're twisted stitches. And twisted stitches are harder to pick up than a regular non-twisted stitch. But the twisted stitches are kind of nice because they make the fabric. So you see what I did? I just went over to this right-hand side and just worked my way down here to get closer to the bottom. And then I slip that with my right hand leg in front and the left hand leg in back. And I'm just going to knit those two together. Now, when I knit this together, just tighten that up a little bit. Did you see how I tightened it up a little mm -hmm. bit? Okay, now say I wanted to bring some slack up a little bit more so that this stitch right here would be tight. Of course, I can't really, okay, let me just, this one is, <clears throat> that one I did as a knit two together. And so this one I'm going to purl. Say that I was going to pick up a stitch between these two. What I would do is slip this as if to knit. And then I would pick up a stitch. And you can twist it 
you literally can twist it around like that. And then you can knit those two together. Now I'm not gonna do that right now because there's no gap right here. But if I was gonna do that, let's see if we can, um, let me see if I can knit this. This is my, what I wanna do is knit this through the back loop. So let me go over to the other side and it'll give you a better representation. So <clears throat> this pattern for the, the um, twisted rib is knit one through the back loop and then purl one. So my knit through the back loop is you grab the back loop and you knit it. It's pretty easy. But it gives you a different look to your ribbing. Do you see how it looks different, Jim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it it gives you um, a more structured ribbing, um, which is fine. I like their, I like these socks, the way the socks look with the twisted ribbing. It looks pretty, don't you think? Yeah. It's very defined. Yeah, yeah and the, the pattern was fairly easy to follow. Like I said, I did use Judy's Magic Cast On for casting on. And um, <clears throat> and then it's telling you how to use it, uh, do the pattern using double points. So they'll say needle A, B, C, and D. But if you just tell yourself, if you want to convert that over to magic loop, A and B is needle one, and C and D is needle two. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. So I'm going, I'm just knitting my way over to this other side. And they had the DK weight yarn on smaller needles, and it's fine. I need my um, socks knit at a little tighter gauge because my foot is so small. I have a five and a half, and my, my foot is tiny. So usually uh, there are a lot of patterns out there that don't work for me. I have to convert them over to less stitches because they won't fit on my feet. So this one, so if I was going to... Here's this stitch right here. And you see how that's kind of loose like that? I could do slip as if to knit and then go right in here. What I would do, I'm looking to see, see that stitch right there. If I can actually grab and be, that, what I'm looking for is the top of the loop. Ta-da! So I got that one like that. And then I'm going to SSK that because what it does, if, if you are grabbing it, if you're going to on the left hand side, you have to do an SSK. And on the right hand side, you have to do a knit two together because you always want the stitch that you picked up to be in the back because you don't want your picked up stitch to be forefront and center because it's going to look stupid. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. So that's all you do. And then now when I do my, the, that's all I do to make it so that my, my socks have no holes in the gusset. Say that I was going over to here and this was still a little bit sloppy. And on this pattern, I'm looking, um, <clears throat> I'm looking to see what the pattern is. This one right here is a pearl. This one's a knit. There should be a pearl in here. And I know in the pattern it tells me to pick up another stitch. So what I can do on that is I was hoping that I could. I wonder if I could. What are you thinking? Well, I you remember how I told you you can be creative about the things that you do? Right. So this is an SSK but literally I could make it an SSK that is knit through the back loop, knit front back. <laughs> and mean? then I just added the stitch. They wanted me to add in the pattern. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know you guys, you're probably thinking she's crazy. She never follows any patterns. <laughs> it's absolutely true. I don't usually follow any patterns. <laughs> so if on right here, if I wanted to tighten this up a little bit right here, I could just go between these and what you'll have to do is grab it like that. And then I could do another SSK. There you go. With that extra strand. So it tightens it up. And then we want to uh, purl one and then go back to our pattern and then knit through the back loop. And I'll show you in just one second. 
um, when I get done with this half of a round, we can take a look and see what we got. But don't be afraid to pick up stitches if things seem loosey goosey because you know all you're doing is you're making your life easier down the road. You won't have to look for strands of yarn because let me let me show you when I'm done here what I'm talking about. On the inside of my sock, there is no extra piece of yarn for me to fix anything. I would have to bring in a whole new strand of yarn and weave it in on both ends and um, so it's not as stable as it would be if you didn't need to do that. If you could just close the hole using your working yarn because your working yarn is the strand of yarn that you're knitting with. And so you don't have to worry about ends being loose or coming undone or anything because it's your working yarn. Do you know what I mean by that, Jim? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so... Um, I just get a little creative and I don't, I, sometimes I'm, I, I should probably look at the pattern more than I do, <laughs> but hey, it works for me. So let's take a look at this. See how tight that is now on that side? See how tight it is? It's very, very tight. It's not going to need any mending whatsoever compared to what it was before. And if you look on this side, this side's not going to need any mending either. It's tight. It goes all the way up to the top and it's tight. So for the next few um, rounds, I will be taking this edge and making sure that when I get back to this edge and I start knitting again, I'll show you. You just let the stitch, this stitch, drop back to here. You do not want to yank on it because it will make a bend in your knitting and it won't look good. So I'm gonna do a knit through the back loop. See, here it is. So I, I let it fall back to the red needle, but you see the stitch on there is not too tight. And then purl it. And then knit through the back loop. I better just keep going. And then I'll show you again. Um, but that's, that's how I do it. Whether it's the underarm of a sweater that you're trying to get where you picked up stitches underneath the arms and it's looking a little funny, whenever you find a stitch that is a little loose or what have you, you can just go ahead and pick up a new stitch. And is that too, is it in the wrong position, Jim? Okay. Sorry, me, sweetie. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. One second. I just, these twisted stitches, I like to take my uh, time because if you grab another strand or grab another stitch, then it's not going to look as pretty, especially with this chain at construction. Yep. Oops. Dring. Yeah. But this, uh, this sock, sock pattern is really fun. It's free on Ravelry. It's by Pearl Soho. And if you haven't tried Pearl Soho patterns, they release a new pattern, I think, every single month. And they had some really nice ones. I've knit uh, quite a few of theirs. They're, it's right up my alley. See? See how close that is? Nice. Let's check this side out. Tight. A tight close. And it's going to be perfect. So that's what I wanted to tell you about. And then for some reason, if when you are picking up a stitch, it doesn't look right, don't be afraid to go back and try it again. Try something else because if one thing doesn't work for you, maybe something else will. And just because it works one time doesn't mean it's going to work the next. It may or may not, unfortunately. So let's look and see who our winner is for this week. I know Jim has me all hooked up here. Oh, what about the, you told them the discount code too. Oh, yes. Um, at, whenever we have a prize for the week, we also have a discount code for the yarn. And the, the discounted yarn for this week is okay. the for today is Bravo Alpaca. And um, it, it is lovely baby alpaca yarn made in Peru. And the choice that we have for, um, for the contest is the charcoal or um, honey. And you, ch you put comments in the comment section and you can get entered to win. But if you just want to buy the Bravo Alpaca yarn, there's a coupon code. And where is that, Jim? It's, you can read it to them. And then it's TT9622. 
And if you type that into when you're buying the yarn, you will get 10% off today, today only. Yes, and I think that Meg um, uh, will post a link for us so that you can find that too and you can push that link and use it. If you like using baby alpaca, there's nothing wrong with getting a discount. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget to take a look at that. And then for next week, I was thinking I'm going to do an XX2 sweater. I have been wanting to make this sweater forever. And you see right here, it's from Vaughn Hinterstein. And she has very um, beautiful patterns. So I'm going to try my luck at that. So we can take a look at how I'm doing with that next week. And then the winter the winner for Ultra Alpaca Light in this lilac colorway. Let's see who it is. It is Jackie Schneider. Congratulations, Jackie. Look at the lovely yarn you won. You'll be able to do something really nice with this. You could even make some of the bed socks out of it because it's a sport or a DK weight uh, sock pattern. Um, but this is wonderful. So all you have to do, Jackie, is get in touch with us at Alpaca Direct. A customer service and we just need your shipping address so that we can send it out in the mail to you and that's all there is to um that when you win yarn it just gets sent shipped right out in the mail and then you get to try it and i love uh, getting this yarn that i enjoy into your hands so you can see why i like it so much <laughs> so i hope all of you have a great week and i will see you next tuesday